Hello. We have one longer story today about a couple going through with a divorce where the woman is one of those types. You know, the type that's out for revenge and to destroy her ex by asking for way too much. OP ends up giving her exactly what she asked for, though, in story one. Background. My ex and I were three months into separation. As I kept suggesting divorce agreements, trying to find what she would accept other than take her back and return to being a doormat for her, I have a good head for legal documents and understood very early that as much as I would prefer to just burn everything down and disappear, legally, it was very likely I was going to be paying alimony and she was entitled to a fair share of everything. But in a no-fault state with no gender preferences, it did mean a fair share. It was clear that legally I would not get an approval for an agreement heavily biased in her favor. So I kept reworking and sending possible divisions. Every few days, for months, she would object to anything that put any responsibility on her, anything that left something of value out of her hands. Anytime I asked her what terms she would be okay with, she would just derail the conversation to something else. Not long into this, I realized that I would need a paper trail, so everything went to email only. Through all of this, I had recognized, too, that a court would order spousal support, so there wasn't any point in just cutting her off financially. Not a total doormat at this point, though. I had moved my direct deposit to a solo account and kept up her weekly cash flow and kept paying the bills. But my final offer in this period was the heavily unbalanced offer of splitting the cars one to each, me taking all the debt, including her student loans, paying her three dollars to $4,000 a month for a year so she could get her feet under her, and she gets all the stuff. I walk away with my car, my dog, some tools, and some clothes. No go. Not good enough for her. And so we get to the meat of the story for the malicious compliance. Three months in, I finally get her to agree to a mediator, since I'm getting nowhere. She shows up to the initial meeting, the first time we have seen each other in a while, the second time since splitting. She was staying with her sister. The mediator starts out with the rules of mediation and the agreements to sign. I sign easily, she box, but signs it finally. One of the relevant terms is that we agree to not file any other legal paperwork. We would come to an agreement and the mediator would file the final court papers on both of our behalf to get the divorce ordered. The mediator starts asking basic questions, and every question to either of us results in my ex launching into an irrelevant topic, attempting emotional manipulation of me or him. I quickly resolve to gray rock her directly and only direct my interactions to the mediator. I do my best to ignore her off-topic ramblings and reply to the mediator when she briefly crossed relevancy like someone falling from a tree and briefly being stopped by various branches on the way down. The peak was when she literally crawled on top of the big table to stick her face in mine to force me to see her and engage in her ranting. The mediator called it quits at that point. He reminded her of the rules she agreed to, gave us homework to fill out, and had us schedule the next meeting with his clerk. Three days later, I get served with a summons to court for a hearing over spousal support. The summons shows the claim my ex made that all she had received in three months was $130. Oh boy, not true at all not to mention in violation of the mediator terms. I end up on a conference call with the ex and the mediator as he tells her that she needs to withdraw the complaint or mediation can't continue. She adamantly insists that she knows her rights. So the mediator ends his involvement, cuts us refund checks minus time works so far, and exits stage left. I prepare for the hearing. I print out three months of bank statements and highlight every transfer to her every bill paid on her behalf, every ATM withdrawal by her card, over 100 toll bills I received from her just driving through express lane tolls, so I got the elevated license plate fee mailed to me. $13,000 and change. You missed a couple zeros in your complaint, I thought. My final stack of paper was rather thick, so I made and printed an Excel spreadsheet summary for the cover sheet. I also looked up the spousal support rules again. It is 
40% of the difference between the income goes from the higher paid to the lower paid. Some little wiggle room, but that's it. Simple. She was currently getting up to 72% of my pay once you factored her bills in. This court hearing was a good thing. Not as good as a mediator and fast resolution, but I wasn't likely to end up screwed more here. Not to mention, I had some daydreams of her finding out what lying on court documents might do. Court date rolls around. I show up to court, waiting in the hall outside the family law section. She shows up and plops herself next to me to start going off on me again. I try to ignore her. Then, to keep from engaging, I start a written transcript of her ranting using the back cover of my paperwork folder. Finally, she realized what I'm doing and ends the ranting with, Oh, I guess you're writing what I'm saying so you can make your friends hate me. They needed no encouragement. She huffs a few seats away and is quiet the rest of the time we waited. The court officer, not a judge, just someone authorized to handle it since it is a simple and clear legal process, finally comes to get us and we head in. The officer starts the legal speeches, yada yada, then asks my ex if she has anything to add to the complaint. She launches into a roller coaster speech proclaiming all my bad faults, some of which were real, how mean I was to try to divorce her, and how I obviously didn't need any of the money I made, because he's just going to live somewhere simple and cheap anyway. Yeah, her words. The court officer returns to the present like someone climbing down from the kitchen table after seeing a rat run by, and she asks me if I have anything I'd like to say. She can see the stack of paper and eyeballs it as she is talking. I hand over the stack, tell the officer that the summary sheet on top should help clear up the financial points, and just verbally start going through the items. At each one, my ex interrupts to give a reason why that item shouldn't count. Every. Single. One. The officer keeps asking her to stop interrupting, but to no avail. We finally finish the list. The officer is shaking her head slightly and says, Mr. Yen, this court process is to ensure that both parties are doing the right thing. So all of the, and gestures to encompass the stack of paper, needs to stop right now. We will garnish your paychecks for the amount specified by law and send that to her instead. I know it's a win. I knew it was going to be. She didn't. She sat there all smug as we get into the calculations. I asked for a couple of adjustments to keep the amount of her car payment since I co-signed and I wanted to be sure the bill was paid. I expected that she would refuse or overspend on other stuff and be unable to pay it. I didn't want to give her the power to trash my credit. The officer agreed. I then asked to keep the insurance payment amount too, for much the same reason. Also agreed by the officer. My ex continued to be smug. I know she was thrilled at the idea of getting a court check directly. It sure would show me. Everything wrapped up. We got the totals, signed papers. I handed over a check for the first payment, and the officer got up to make copies of everything. I asked the officer if I could wait in another room while she did and got an agreement with a bit of side eye at my ex. I got my paperwork first with the officer saying, it might take a few minutes for her to get her paperwork, but you are free to go. I got the hint and left immediately. I had parked a few streets away anyway, another barrier if she couldn't park near me. I got in my car and immediately called my cell carrier and canceled her phone. Does she want to set up her own plan? I can't answer that. I am obeying a court order to remove her from my accounts. Okay. And worked down the remaining subscriptions I was paying for that she used. I even had the bills in front of me from court with account numbers and customer service numbers right there. I was done in driving home when she started blowing up my phone with incoming calls, demanding to know what I was doing. Then texts from her sister's phone. Then calls. I just grinned and didn't answer any of them. She stopped after an hour or so and gave me a few hours of silence. Then all caps email with a screenshot of the Netflix inactive account message. OMG, even Netflix? I admit, I giggled. The fallout wasn't over though. A month later, after she realized how much less she has from me after winning her case, she files an appeal. It is denied due to lack of reason. A month later, she files a complaint that I wasn't paying her car payment, just an excuse to get into court. I had been paying it, and I was also pretty confident that even if I hadn't, she didn't know how to get into that loan's account, 
She legally could, just never had cared to learn how. I had a lawyer at this point, and we both go to court. She is going to join by phone. The officer paused before calling and tells my lawyer, this lady is a piece of work. The validation of that statement will always remain with me. The call goes predictably. My ex makes irrelevant rants. The officer keeps shutting her down. Finally, asks my ex for proof that I wasn't paying the car payment, as she is holding statements and check images proving I had. My ex nearly screams. I just know he isn't so he can hurt me. The officer replies, I am holding proof that he has paid it and is satisfying his legal obligation. The complaint is dismissed. Thank you. And hangs up on my ex. Divorce took another 10 months. Lots more crazy. Teaches her newbie lawyer a hard lesson. And I walked away with even less alimony than the spousal support and only about 60% of the debt. I lost my dogs to her though. My only regret in the outcome. One is certainly past old age limits now. The other is in that range. I still miss them. In the comments, Rose Reader said, It's always nice when people show you how right you were to leave them. OP replied. She asked me several times, Can we be friends still? At first I said, That depends on how smooth the divorce goes. Later, I didn't bother replying. The question was manipulation anyway. Darwin Mate said, You're a fantastic writer. I can't understand the dogs going to her. What was the reasoning there? I hope she looked after them. OP replied, to hurt me. It was the only leverage she had over me. They were a big point of why it took so long. She used them as a means of stalling everything quite a few times. I eventually had to make the choice to let them go to remove her leverage. The court saw them as property worth a set amount of money. Heartless in a lot of ways. OP, she's a total witch for taking your dogs. I'm sorry you had to lose them to her. Ugh. On the flip side, you needed to get this leech out of your life. How did you end up with her? Where did you meet? What red flags did you ignore? Oh, so many questions. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.